We're going to build a fun old school game smartphone app using Thunkable. We're going to be building a crude version of Whack-A-Mole, an arcade classic. Initially, our game will consist of a 2x2 matrix, and we're going to show an X randomly on one of the buttons. The player's goal is to click the X as soon as possible. The game ends when the player messes up or takes too long. Let's go to Thunkable and sign in with the Google account. Let's create our app. We're going to call it Whack-A-Mole, upper camel case, no spaces. Let's change our app name to include dashes. And let's do the same thing with the title of our screen. Make sure you set the screen orientation to portrait because this is a portrait style application. All right, everything looks good. On to our layout. We're going to be using some vertical arrangements. Drag one to the phone. We're going to call this one game. Let's make sure we align it vertically to the center. Set our height to 75% of the screen. And let's fill parent for width. Let's grab some more vertical arrangements. Drag one below game. We're going to call this one score. Align vertically to the center. This one's going to take up 10% of the height and we're going to fill parent for width. Grab one more, place it below. We're going to call this one controls. This one's going to have the remaining 15% of the height and fill parent for width. Okay, now we need some vertical arrangements to go inside our game vertical arrangement for our buttons. Drag one inside game, call it top. Height, fill parent, width, fill parent. Grab another vertical arrangement and place it within game below top. Rename to bottom. Once again, height, fill parent, width, fill parent. Now we need some horizontal arrangements for our buttons. One inside each of top and bottom. Drag one inside top, call it row one. Fill parent, fill parent. One more horizontal arrangement. This one goes inside your bottom arrangement. Rename it to row two. Once again, fill parent for height, fill parent for width. These will contain our buttons. Let's go make our buttons. Go to user interface, drag a button inside row one, drag another button, and let's rearrange them. Let's have button one be on the left, button two on the right. Each button we're going to do this for. Background color, let's make it white. Font size, 60. Fill parent for height, fill parent for width, and let's call it B1 so we can actually see it. Excellent. We'll do the same thing for each button. Background color, white, 60. For our height, fill parent, for parent for the width, and let's call it B2 so it fits on the screen. All right, now we need to grab buttons for row two. Drag a button inside row two, rearrange them, format them the same way, background color white. 60 for font size. Fill parent for height, fill parent for width, and let's call this one B3. Last button, background color white, 60 for font size. Fill parent for height, fill parent for width, press OK. B4 for text. Excellent. Now we need our score label. Grab a label, put it into the score vertical arrangement. Rename it label score. This will store the score for our game. Let's make it bold, 24 font, Roboto thin. And let's have it begin with the text whack-a-mole. Excellent. Now let's grab a button to, to start the game. Rename, button, play. Background color, let's do deep purple. Font size, 24. Font face, Roboto regular. Let's make it 50% width and leave the rest alone. For the text, play game and text color should be white. 
Awesome. One more piece. We need a clock because we need a timer for our game. Drag that onto the stage and it will include it as a non-visible component. Excellent. Disable the timer by default and save your app. It's time to start coding our game. Let's go to our blocks. Let's start by adding some variables. Our first variable is going to store a list of buttons. So let's create an empty list and let's name it buttons. Our next variable is going to store our score. So we're going to call it score and initialize it to the value of zero. Then I need one more variable. We're going to call this variable playing and it's going to track whether we're currently playing the game or not. We're going to initially set that to false. Now go to the screen and find the initialize event. When our app launches, we need to populate our list. So we're going to set our buttons list to our list of buttons. So we're going to make a list and it needs to have one, two, three, four items. For each button, drag to the stage and you can duplicate. We're going to need one for each of our four buttons. Button one, button two, button three, button four. Now when our app starts, we have a list of our buttons that we can use to program. The player begins the game by clicking on the button play button. Let's find the click event for the button play button and drag it to the stage. We're going to create a procedure called start game that's going to have all the things we want to do once the game begins. Drag a procedure to the stage and name it start game. Then we are going to call that whenever button play is clicked. At the beginning of our game, we have a couple things to do. First, we have to reset our score to zero. And then we need to update the screen so that the label shows our updated score. Find the text set for label score, and we're going to get the value of the score global variable. This way it shows on the screen. At the beginning of the game, we're going to need to shuffle the game board. So let's go ahead and just create a procedure called shuffle. Our shuffle procedure is going to help us work with our buttons. So grab a for each block, and then you're going to have to grab our list of buttons from our global variable. To shuffle, we need to go through each one of the buttons. So go down to any button, and the first thing we need to do is we need to set their text to nothing. So grab the set button text of component and drag it in. For each item in the list, we are going to set its text to an empty string. Excellent. Let's go down again. We are also going to randomize the background color. So drag the set button background color in as well. For each button in our list, we are going to generate a random color. Go to your colors blocks and there's a special block called make color. We're going to dynamically generate the colors using randomize feature. Colors are specified using red, green, and blue channel, each with a value between 0 and 255. We're going to create a random block that randomly generates a number for each color channel. Get rid of the zeros and bring in the random integer blocks. Awesome. Now that the text has been cleared from each button and each button has been given a random background color, we need to pick our random button to be our X. Drag the set button text component into the procedure and go to lists. There's a special block to pick a random item from a list. We're going to pick one random item from our global buttons list. So drag that onto the stage. Once a random item from the buttons list has been picked, we will set its text to X. At any given time, only one of our buttons will have an X. Last but not least, when we start the game, we need to call this shuffle procedure so that the game board is set. Let's take a look at the app so far. When I click the play game button, it shuffles my board. But now I need to wire my buttons to check to see whether the player clicked on the X. To do that, I'm going to create a procedure called check click. This procedure needs to take one input, what's called an argument or a parameter. We're going to name ours label.
we need to test whether the label is equal to x. So use an if then block and then go to logic and find an equals operator. We're going to be testing to see whether the label passed in has the value of the uppercase x. This is how we see whether the user clicked on the right button. Let's go to our variables. If the user clicked on the right button, we're going to give them 100 points by setting our score to the current score plus 100. Get the score, and then from the math blocks, bring down 100. In this way, we increase or increment our score. Excellent. The other thing we need to do, always, when we update our score, is we need to update the label. Grab the label score, set text block, and assign it the current value of the score. You must do this any time you update the score global variable. If the user clicks on the right button, then we want to shuffle our board. All we have to do is call our shuffle procedure. Now we have our check click procedure in place. We need to wire our buttons. Anytime someone clicks on one of the buttons, we need to call check click and it will test to see whether the user clicked on the button that's the X. For each button, bring in their click event. And then from there, we're going to call this procedure we just wrote, check click. Pass in the button's current text. This is the label. Now we can duplicate this because we need one for each of our buttons. Once again, we created a check click procedure to test to see whether the user clicked on the right button. And now we have events that fire anytime someone clicks on one of the buttons that test to see whether they clicked on the one with the X. If they did, they'll get 100 points, as you can see here, and it reshuffles. If they click on the wrong one, no points. We're almost there. The player is going to have a limited time to click the X. Otherwise, the game is going to be over. In order to create this functionality, we're going to use a clock, specifically a timer. Find the clock and find its timer enabled event. When the game starts, the timer is initially disabled. We need to enable it by setting it to true. And we also need to set our playing global variable to true. This is used throughout the program to enable or disable functionality. Now, what happens if it takes too long for the player to click the X? Well, then the clock's timer event will fire. When it fires, we want to set the game to be over by setting playing to false. And we also want to disable the timer. Go back to the clock, find its timer enabled block, and drag it to the stage. Set that to false. Once again, we're stopping the game and we're disabling the timer. Then we need to update the label. Its text should say game over and the score. Go to text and find a join block. We're going to join three pieces of text together, three strings. The first one is going to say game over. The second piece of text is going to say dash score colon space, and last but not least, using our global variable, we need to display the current value of the score. Also, let's update our play button to say play again. Drag it set text block to the stage and change it to say play again, all caps. Awesome. What do we have now? Now, our game times out if you don't click the X fast enough. We have an updated score and an updated button. But what happens if the user actually clicks on the right button, the one with the X? We need to disable and enable our timer. To do that, we need to update our check click procedure. Go down and find the clock and find the timer enabled block. Bring it inside our if statement. If the user clicked on the X, we should disable the timer by setting it to false. Then we shuffle 
our game board. And then we re-enable it. Just like that. We need to do one more thing. Bring an if-then block in and nest the other if-then within it. We need to check to see whether the game is being played. We're going to do an equality check to see whether playing equals true. Only if playing is equal true will we even test to see that you click the X. As you can see, if you click on the X, you get more time. And the game goes on as long as your reflexes are true. Time for a couple finishing touches. Go to the designer, find the game vertical arrangement, and unset its visible property. We're going to hide the game board until the game begins. Now let's go to blocks. We're going to be setting the board visible in the start game procedure. Find the game vertical arrangement, find its set visible block, bring it into the start game procedure, and set it to true. This way the game board shows, but only once the person has started the game. Okay, let's go down to our shuffle procedure. We're going to add an extra piece of functionality here. We want to be able to set our timer with each shuffle. Right now our timer is one second or 1000 milliseconds. But we can set this from our code. Find the timer interval set block and let's set it to something different. How about 900 milliseconds, 9 tenth of a second. Later on you could randomize the time or decrease it here to increase the complexity and challenge in the game. Now when we start our app, the game board is invisible, but once we press play game, it shows up. It's time to review what we've done so far. The first thing we did was created three variables. Remember, a variable is just a place to store information in a program. Then we decided that when the screen initializes, we would populate our list of buttons. Currently we have four. And then we wired our button play button. When it's clicked, it will run a procedure called start game. Start game contains all the things we want to happen at the beginning of the game, including enabling the timer, shuffling the game board, resetting the score. Our shuffle procedure goes through each one of our buttons and clears out the text, gives it a random background, and then chooses a random button to be the X. Then we had to wire each one of the buttons to call the check click procedure. The check click procedure checks to see whether the user clicked the right button, the one with the X. If they did, we update the score, disable the timer, reshuffle the game board, and re-enable the timer. If the user isn't fast enough, we stop the game, disable the timer, show them game over, and play again. Finally, we added a couple of finishing touches. We updated our shuffle procedure to set the timer's interval, and we also hid the game board until the play game button was pressed. Let's go ahead and save our app. Now it's time to build it into an APK, an Android package. Once your Android package is built, you'll be able to test it on a real-life smartphone device.